these past few years have been years that have tested our heart and soul. Those tests sometimes came with an agony that was hard to bear. But there is a special barbarous of a party way and a special barbarous of a party spirit that was avail available to us on which to draw. For us, it is and must always be service before self. We must never fail our nation. And we must always remember that our party was created to make doing extraordinary things our ordinary business. Even when, and especially when, that business is our own party's affairs. Our challenges were severe, but we faced them, and we faced them. And today, we stand ready, united, and strong. We stand ready to once again secure a great electoral victory. We also stand ready in our people's name and on our people's behalf to bring our nation out of this valley of desolation that the DLP has lodged it in. I begin my address to you today by thanking all for the remarkable spirit of camaraderie that enables us now to be able to march forward in unison. On my return to this office, I publicly told Mia that her party and her country needs her. I especially now salute her contribution to the party and the country over the past year. I'm here to stand at her And I just warmly to salute and to congratulate those who have received special awards this morning. Clyde and the fellow ladies on the forefront for wonderfully exemplifying those special attributes of commitment, loyalty, and devotion to the service of this party, which helped to make the last year so special. What was at times so hard to bear is now becoming sweet to remember. I am proud to be a liberal. I also love my country. But like you, and like so many of our citizens, I feel a great sense of despair about what is being done to it by the absolutely worst administration in the history of our land. And as we reflect on the horror movie which has unfolded in Barbados, we ourselves should draw from it certain object lessons to take with us into the future as we look once again to constitute the government of this nation. The first is that the Dems in office have behaved as if they own Barbados. However, as we look to retain office, we must pledge that we will never act as if Barbados belongs to the Barbados Labour Party for us to do with it its resources and its institutions that which is pleasing only to ourselves and to our supporters. We must seek to build a truly inclusive society, resting on the strongest foundations of social justice, a society for all. If and when we get an opportunity to serve, we must give of our very best to pursue only the nation's and the people's business. For what has happened in Barbados over the past four years has been a disaster brought about, about from the politics of the fucking cow. It has been a failure 
of the practice of Paki Pamuxi that has taken the form of the use of the financial resources of the taxpayers and the state to pay for the governing party's political programs. It has taken the form of the disgraceful use of state-owned institutions like the CBC as agencies of the party. I say to you this morning, on the eve of a historic victory, such things must have no place in the political affairs of our modern party. The second object lesson is that serious and inspiring goals have to be set for the nation to achieve. And the achievement of those goals must be the chief occupation of a party in government. Chief among such goals must be the creation of conditions for the attainment of full and civilized development, for the eradication of poverty, for the generation of full employment, for the establishment of exemplary standards of government, and for the building of a just and a cohesive society. Trifling around and playing around with the politics of politics cannot, must not be enough for us. As the recent experience of the Dems have shown, you can win power, but will not govern effectively if your mandate does not rest on a strong program to develop this nation, or if it rests on whimsical promises to provide to the free cars, interest-free mortgages, free homes, and the like that were intended only as promises to win the support of certain groups. The third lesson that we must draw from the recent experience of the Dems is that governments exist to make things happen for the greater and for the common good. Governments must make the best possible decisions, hold themselves accountable to the people for those decisions, and must let the results work for them. Inertia, however, is not and cannot be an option for our Barbados. In this vein, you must allow me to reflect for a moment on the most profound disaster that has entrenched itself in our Barbados of late, the crisis of leadership. We have been informed by an authority that is beyond challenge, the eager level of the Democratic Labour Party, that inertia exists like a black hole at the center of this deadly administration. I do believe that the situation may be a bit worse than that. The EV-11 got it wrong. Inertia refers to a situation when somebody is away, but is inactive. Brandon has however confirmed that he has been sung and fast asleep. I know that he delights in giving us the benefit of his vast knowledge of biblical quotations. I recommend that he adds to his repertoire. He can, for example, turn for guidance to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? And he should be moved by Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10. Go to the ark, thou sluggard. Consider her maid and the wife. Or better still, as a leader of people, he may want to be further and to be instructed by the example that is described in Psalm 121, verses 3 and 4. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. For a good measure, Brandel the sleeper may feel that all is not lost. He may still qualify to earn some foreign exchange for Barbados, 
by winning contracts to do advertisements for either slumberettes or posturepedic, the makers of fanaticism. That the challenges which the next administration will have to contend with will be the most formidable to face any government in this country since independence. The new and the brutal reality is that there is no area of life in Barbados which is free from crisis, free from blundering, free from fumbling, or free from disorder. Indeed, the attitude, ineptitude of this government finds its perfect metaphor in the fact that what was intended to be the greatest accomplishment of this administration, the showpiece housing complex at Coverley, has now virtually grown to a halt. The inability to fix things or to make them happen for the better is illustrated away across a wide range of fiascos. These include the Alexander School fiasco, the inability to make things right with the people, policy holders and investors. The hope is that is the project at Pickering, the unfolding disaster at the Barbados Water Authority. The many different ways in which a new hospital is to be built without a site being chosen for it. The drift at Paradise, the unfolding mess at Bagatelle, the $175 million crisis at UWI. However, in a very real sense, two words and two words alone capture what should and which will forever stand as a legacy of this DLP administration. As regards the economy, that word is junk. And in respect of the governors of this country, that word is lawlessness. The two great challenges that therefore must be successfully met by your next BLP government is on the first part to rebuild an economy that has been reduced to junk. The second is to restore Barbados' long tradition for some efficient, effective and stable government which has hitherto created the stability on which our national development has been founded.